Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. This channel is for IT pros, IT students, IT admins of every stripe and experience level. So when I'm thinking about doing a video of installing an operating system, I can just see 150 eyes roll to the back of their head. Does Mr. Vanderpool expect us all to huddle around YouTube? and watch grass grow because that's what installing an operating system is about as exciting and interesting as watching grass grow. Okay, true. I get it. It's like, let's do a video of installing Windows 11. How many times have I installed Windows 11? Okay, I'm there. Each of you need to think about where you are in your experience level with Linux, experience level with E. If you're an IT student, watch everything, pause it, download the video notes, you need it all. Depending on your experience level and what you have done, you may not watch this video at all. You just may download the video notes and see, is there any nuggets you can get out of the video notes? That's fine. If you're a power user in Linux, you can probably skip the video. You've got a dozen different ways that you like to install your host operating system. Bear that in mind as I move forward. I'm going to be very systematic. I'm going to be very careful step by step because I am focused on from the intro level student to the advanced admin and each of you decide how much and what content you want to consume. You to decide either to fast forward the YouTube player to times four and listen to me speak in uh, high pitched chipmunk, that's fine, or you can slowly go through the video with us as we go through step by step. We are going to get started on the installation of Debian, and I'm doing it from a standpoint of building up a Debian host in which we are going to put that on an Active Directory network. We're going to use that to explore and better understand how Linux works, how to incorporate it into your Windows environment. There are so many of you that have much more experience in Linux than myself. I'm a Windows guy. I flat out will say it. I am working hard at becoming a Linux guy. I want you to take a look at my Hyper-V manager. I don't know if you get a better results if you use VirtualBox. I love VirtualBox. I'm running on an SD card. So the performance is not super, but it's great because I can swap out SD cards. This install is basically a GUI-less version of Debian without any of the utilities except the ones that I install. So it's pretty lean. It's not as lean as you can make versions of Linux, but it's a great start. Let's take a look at this hard drive and take a look at the size, and then we'll start adding GUI components. Take a look at my Debian baseline hard drive, VHDX, and you can see I'm about 6.5 gigs. That's pretty lean considering all things. Now we're going to add the GUI to this Debian install, and you're going to see this grow quite large. Just to give you a comparison, this is server 2025 with a GUI desktop, and you can see it's about 21 gigs. And I don't have a lot installed on this server in terms of roles and features. Now here's a copy of Debian in which I have the full GUI install. I've got about 16 gigs, and I'm using Time Shift, and I'm using the secondary hard drive to store those restore points for this Debian copy. It's very helpful if I blow something up and I want to restore the copy of Linux back to a known date or time, I can do that with Time Shift. Here's another copy of Debian that I've got, and it's also GUI, and you can see it's about 42 gigs. Now here's a version of BSD Linux, and I'm using PFSense, and it's basically a router firewall. And you can see here, 
This version of Linux is running about 4 gigs. One last one to compare. Here's Windows 11 Pro, and this is a full install, and it's about 40 gigs. Don't forget gigs. the video notes. This is an example of the video notes. There'll be times that you're watching me and you're just, you get lost. You download these video notes. A lot of information is in the notes, step by step. There's as much time put in the video notes as there is anything that I do. Because I know some of you are visual readers, and I've tried to put enough graphics and information and highlighting in the notes so that they will help you. That's the goal. This channel is about learning, it's not about entertainment. Now in my setup of my virtual machine, I'm going to set up a generation 2 virtual machine and I'm going to give it 3 gigs. I do not use dynamic memory for Linux because I find Linux doesn't like dynamic memory. I'm going to give it a, a network connection and I'm just going to let it by default set up a virtual disk. We'll go ahead and install from a CD-ROM and from an image. Now the ISO that I'm going to use to download and install Debian is called an X64 Net Install ISO. This is the smallest ISO for installing Linux that I'm aware of. I'm going to use that to boot. I'm going to go to this and go into settings. I'm going to get rid of secure boot. I'm going to go to three processors, not 12, and I'm not going to do checkpoints. I will also say in automatic start action, do nothing. This is just my choices, and if you're doing virtual machine, you're welcome to play with whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and start, and we're going to do a graphical install. You can skip that if you want, but it's fine. Because we're doing a graphical install does not mean we're doing the, gra the GUI install, so just be aware of that. Let's do English, United States. You can all choose whatever is appropriate for you. And I'm just doing a, the basic walk. It just goes on and works great. I haven't had any real problems at this particular point. We're going to give it a host name. I'm going to give it Davian 12-8 because I'm using a bookworm domain. This is my domain. Now here I would definitely make sure that you show your password in the clear and check it and make sure this is right because if you don't, you just have a mess. So do this carefully, systematically. Now I'm going to give it a user. Now that's just the name of the user and this is my user account and I'm just going to leave it lowercase john and then give him, again, make sure you show your passwords in the clear so you can check your work. Let's continue on. And it pretty well determined what area of the US I was in. We're going to go to the guided use entire disk. You can do a lot of things here. I would just leave it at the guided use entire disk. Keep it simple. And it's found my virtual hard drive. So let's continue. And I'm going to put all files in one partition. This is not recommended as you get further down the road, but to start out and to begin, this is a good choice. This is what it's going to do. It's going to create a number of partitions, and we're going to write them to disk. It requires you to say, yes, we're going to write this disk, and you're going to wipe out whatever's in there and it's doing the partitioning of that disk. We'll eventually get into disk setup and all the partitions that it needs to set up to boot to, UEFI partitions, the swap file partition, all of those things unique to both UEFI and also unique to Linux.
And again, depending on how fast your hardware is how fast this setup goes. I'm going to do video edit magic, so I'm going to cut out a lot of the, the uh, time delay. It will seem for you moving very fast, but it may not be fast when you actually do it. We're installing the base system. This is basically the operating system, components, libraries, all the things that it needs to install. Now it loads a lot of stuff and then you can decide to install it. There probably are ways that you can skip this step and only install exactly what you want. There are methods of doing that. I'm basically going to follow the Debian 12 install to some degree. It'll say, do you want to scan extra installation media? We're going to say no. Configure the package manager. In other words, this is where we're going to get software from and the operating system. And we're going to use deb.debian.org. No proxy information in this case. This is con configuring our package manager to download modules for the operating system and for software. I'm deciding, do I want to participate in collecting information about applications that I use on this copy of Linux? I can say no or yes. You can make your choice. Here I'm going to unselect Debian desktop environment and GNOME, which we are going to install by the way. I'm going to add the SSH server and standard system utilities and continue. We're getting to the final section is loading the uh, grub bootloader, which is the actual boot section of this Debian install. And it has to load the UEFI because this is a UEFI installation. It's finishing up the installation. The installation is complete. Make sure you remove the installation media. I'll check my media and make sure it's been ejected so it's not there. Otherwise, it reboots and it, you try to reinstall again. We're going to go continue. It's finishing up the installation and it will reboot. And there we go. And we are ready. And when I hit enter, it should just go ahead and load the core kernel and some basic uh, daemons or services and a few utilities in here. Now I'm going to be logging on as root in my case. And now with the pound symbol, I know that I'm in root. So when I see my prompt and I see root at Debian 12-8, which is the host name, and I see the pound symbol, I know that I have admin access to the operating system. If you're watching me right now, you're the very person we're attempting to reach with our channel. People with a real interest to learn technical topics and skills. Because our content is free on YouTube and our audience is a relatively small group of viewers. If any of this material is helpful to you, we would appreciate your support. You can support the channel as simple as liking a video. Hit that like button because it helps others like you find our content. You can subscribe. It's an effective way of supporting us. And if you can, if you're able, you can become a member of the channel. It's $2.99 a month, less than a cup of coffee. And our members are a cornerstone for our success. And we really want your comments and feedback on any video we produce. Your input and feedback only makes us better and we need that. So we want to hear from you. And thank you for supporting Tech Savvy Productions.